In the last video, we looked at using definite integrals to find the area under a curve. In all of the examples we looked at, the curve was above the x-axis. In this video, we're going to look at some examples when it's not always above the x-axis. I'm going to start off with a line. Hopefully, this will give some understanding of why we need to split the integral. I'm going to have the line y is equal to x. So y is equal to x will look something like so. So I'll just draw a part of it. What I'm going to do at this stage is put on some x coordinates. And this point is going to be now uh, x is equal to negative 1. And we'll put this point on x is going to be equal to 2. So y is equal to x. Let's say I wanted to find the area trapped between the line or the function and the x-axis we can see that we're going to have two triangles here. If we look at the first one, the first triangle just here, well, that is going to have a base of one and a height of one. So if I wanted, let's just put that on, the area of this one is going to be one times by one. So one times by one and then divided by two. So the area is going to be one half. If we look at this triangle right here, what we've got is a base of 2 and a height of 2. If y is equal to x, the x coordinate is 2, the y coordinate is 2, so those two lengths are the same. So this is going to be 2, this is going to be 2. If we do 2 times by 2, that's 4, divided by 2, that is 2. So we can see now that we have a total area trapped between the line or the function y equals x and the x-axis of 2.5. So total is equal to 2 and 1 half. We saw that we could use integration now between two x-coordinates, as long as the function was continuous, to find the area trapped under the curve. So in this particular case, I should be able to say that the area will be equal to the integral from negative 1 to 2 of x dx. So let's go ahead and look at evaluating this. So what we're going to get then from here, we can say that the area will be equal to, if I now integrate x, we get 1 half x squared, and we're interested now in the function from x equals negative 1 to x is equal to 2. So evaluating, I simply sub in the limits. So we're going to have now 1 half, and just putting this in, if I substitute in 2 here, I'm going to get 1 half of 2 squared. Well, that's going to give me 2. What I'm now going to do is subtract away, evaluating negative 1. Well, negative 1 squared is going to give me 1, and that's going to give 1 half. If I now do this, we can see that instead of being 2 and a half, it's going to be 1 and a half, or if you like, 3 over 2. That has given me a distorted figure because what we've done is found the area under the curve in a formulaic way but doesn't consider negative integrals. So what I should have done here is split this up. And I should have split it such that we were doing two different integrals. Sketching this really will help out. So what I'm going to say is that the area would have been equal to the integral of this function from negative 1 to 0. We need to take the modulus of this, or if you like, the absolute value. All that is, is taking the same numeric value, but making the sign positive. Then I would add to this now the integral from 0 to 2, which would give me this area right here. If I'd done that at this stage, we would have simply gone ahead and made the area here our positive rather than negative and found that. So what we need to do is split up, find the points where the curve, or in this case the line, crosses the x-axis and consider different areas. So let's go ahead and do some questions. In question 6a, it says show that the equation y is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 6x can be written in the form y is equal to x, x plus 2, x minus 3. Common factor of x, so taking the common factor of x out, we'll have x multiplied by a quadratic of x squared minus x minus 6. 
we factor the quadratic, y is equal to x, then we're going to have x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 3. And that is what we end up with. In part b, we need to sketch a curve y is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 6x, showing any points of intersection with the coordinate axis. So from our work with cubic equations, we can see now that we have three points of intersection where y is equal to 0. We will have the point now where x is equal to negative 2, so we'll have negative 2, 0. We will have the origin, which is 0, 0. And we will have the point just here, which is going to be 3, 0. Positive cubic equation starts in the third quadrant, will come round through the point negative 2, 0 to a maximum, turn round, come through the origin, round to a minimum, we will turn round, and then we will go back through now the x-axis at the point 3, 0. So this is now the graph of y is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 6x, and we've got the points of intersection. In part c, we need to find the area trapped between the x-axis and the curve with equation y is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 6x. So what I'm looking to do is simply go ahead and find the area. The area is going to be this part just here combined with this part just here. This part that I'm uh, sketch, uh, shading now will give us a negative value. We simply take the absolute value of that. So what I'm going to do is write on here now that this point is going to be area 1. You don't have to. It's entirely up to you. And this point is going to be equal to area 2. So area 1 will be equal to the integral from negative 2 to 0 of our value here, which is going to be our uh, expression x cubed minus x squared minus 6x dx. Now, this area 2 is going to be equal to the modulus of the integral from 0 to 3 of exactly the same. We're going to find now the modulus, the absolute value, the numeric value of our answer. Make it positive if you like and simply go ahead and use that. So let's go ahead and do area 1. What well, area 1 we're going to have now on here, if I simply integrate this, that's 1 fourth x to the fourth, then we're going to have minus 1 third x cubed minus 3x squared, and we're interested in this from negative 2 to 0. So if I substitute in, substituting in 0, we know that's going to give us 0 plus 0 plus 0, and then we subtract from that, and now we're going to put in the negative 2. I'm going to do this on a calculator. If it was an exam, I would show my full workings. So negative 2 is going in. So what we've got then is the following. We've got 0.25 of that answer to the power of 4. Then from that, we're going to subtract that answer cubed divided by 3. So answer cubed divided by 3. And then from that, we're going to subtract now 3 lots of the answer squared. Uh, what do we get? Negative 16 over 3. So what we can say then is that A1, I'm just putting A1, A1 is equal to now positive 16 over 3. So that's that one just there, that's 16 thirds. So all I'm going to do is exactly the same, and we're just going to go ahead and write for area 2 will be exactly the same expression for the integral, but this time I'm going from 0 to 3. So area 2, and you might want to put this just in to show four workings. I don't think you need to. What we'll have on this one here is going to be, we're going to put in now the 3, and then we'll subtract the 0 plus the 0 plus the 0. So what I'm going to do is substitute in now 3. So 3 is going to be my answer, and then I'm simply going to use this one. So we've got 0 0.25, and then we'll have answer to the power of 4. Then we'll have now a minus, and you could do a bit of simplifying here if you want, our answer cubed over 3. And then from that, we're going to subtract now 3 lots of the answer squared. That's going to give me now negative 63 over 4. So negative 63 over 4. Therefore, now area 2 will be equal to the absolute value of this. And again, if you want to put your modulus bars here to show that, 
we can say that is 63 over 4. So that one is just here. So that is going to be 63 over 4. So we simply need to add those two values together. So if I just multiply this by negative 1, and then I'm going to add for 16 thirds and leave this as an exact fraction over 16 thirds. What's that? 253 over 12. So total area trapped by the curve and the x-axis. So A1 plus A2 is going to be equal to 253 over 12. 12 and let's just check I've got that incorrectly and that is what we have so there we go nice and logical nice and straightforward do you need all of those workings in the exam find out from your exam board or the teacher that you're working for for me it just shows exactly what I'm doing okay in question seven we need to find the area enclosed by the curve with equation y is equal to the quantity x minus 1 multiplied by the quantity x minus 3 and uh, the x-axis and the line x equals 0 and x is equal to 2. So as suggested in the last video, a quick sketch up. This is a positive quadratic equation and we've got now the points intersection of x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 3. So we should be relatively comfortable with just a basic sketch of this and it will look something like so. So we'll come round and then back and back up like that. This is a point 1, this is going to be the point 3, this is the origin, and we're interested now in this point right here. So if I just draw a quick sketch, what we're looking at is this area, so we've got this area, plus the absolute value of this area. So this is a critical value for me, because at the point where x is equal to 1, it crosses the x-axis. So what we're going to have is, again, two different areas, which you don't need to call A1 and A2. I am going to, though. So what we can do is say that A, A1, so A1, will be equal to the integral from 0 to 1. So we're going from 0 to 1. That will be positive. What we've got here, if we expand this out, that's x squared minus 4x plus 3. So x squared minus 4x plus 3 and we're integrating with respect to x. So a1 is going to be now, we've got 1 third x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x, and we're going from 0 to 1. So let's go ahead and evaluate that part. a1, well, that's going to be 1 third minus 2 plus 1, and then we're going to subtract from that 0 plus 0 plus 0. So area 1, what are we going to get on there? 4 over 3. So 4 over 3, let's uh, check that we've got all of that in there uh, to find that. Uh, so let's get all of that in. Uh, what have we got on here? 4, four over 3, that's, what's that going to be? 3, uh, not negative. Uh, that should, there we go, that should be 3. That looks good. Uh, 3 times 1, that's fine. Um, yeah, I was looking at this one, trying to do it in my head. Um, yeah, four thirds, that's good. Okay, now area two, area two will be equal to the modulus, the absolute value of the integral from this point right here. This is where it crosses the, the x-axis, so it's going to be now one to two of the exactly the same function, x squared minus four x plus three, and we're integrating with respect to x. So what we're going to get then, Area 2 is going to be the absolute value of the modulus, hence why I'm using the modulus bars. And then what we're going to have is writing out my full workings. We're going to have 1 third x cubed minus now the 2x squared plus the 3x. And we're going now from 0 to 1. So let's write this in. So area 2 is going to be equal to now the absolute value. What's that going to give me now if I write, uh, if I put this on here? So we're going, uh, not from, let's put the correct limits on. We're going from 1 to 2 this time, not 0 to 1. We've done that one. That's what I want just here. So that's going to give me now 8. So 8 over 3 minus, what's that going to give me? Uh, minus 8 plus 6. And then we'll subtract away from that. What's that going to be? Uh, one third. It's going to be this one just here, isn't it? So I'm simply going to substitute that in for four thirds because we've already worked that out. 
Okay, let's uh, let's be a bit. Uh, what have we got on here? That's going to let's put this in a calculator. I'm being a little lazy. So what have we got? We've got eight, uh, eight thirds, and then we've got from there we need to subtract two. So take two, take another four thirds. So just working this out. Hopefully you're keeping up with the, these calculations. So right, uh, so a two is going to be equal to the modulus of negative two thirds. So A2 is equal to 2 over 3. So from this, we can say now, therefore, A1 plus A2 is going to be equal to 4 thirds plus 2 thirds, which is 6 over 3, which we can write as 2. If you want to write unit squared, you can do, but that gives us exactly what we want. And we've gone ahead and found the area enclosed by the curve. Um, and the x-axis between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2 by splitting it up. So that's what we do. We find the two, um, two points, so we need our two areas, so we consider where it crosses the x-axis, and then go ahead and split up. Find the absolute value of one of them and add it to the already positive value for the other.